All right, here's the moment you've been waiting for. In part two of the Advanced Workflows course, we're going to look at ingesting media. And despite how that sounds, no eating is involved. Okay, so we'll look at the individual components to do a proper ingest, and then we're also going to dig into some actual footage. So what is ingesting? Well, ingesting is the process of bringing media onto a media drive from its source drive for video editing. So let's kick the Webster definitions to the side and look at what happens when we wrap up things on set. Okay, listen close. If you take away only one thing from this entire course, it should be that redundancy is your best friend. Why? Because unexpected things happen all the time. And when they do, the backups you set in place will save your project and maybe your ass. So once production is wrapped, the footage should be dumped onto two separate hard drives. One of these will then be used to copy the footage to your media storage, while the other is going to be a backup. It's not touched unless it's needed. So if you're doing the math there, that means that you then have three independent copies of the footage, the two hard drives from the shoot, as well as the new copy that is on your media storage for editing. Now, only as a last resort should you edit directly on the footage derived from the shoot. So prior to ingesting, it's important to have a well thought out folder structure. You can find many examples of folder structures online from the simple to the incredibly complex and intricate. In the end, it will probably make the most sense for you to create from scratch or adapt a folder structure that meets your specific needs for your specific project or projects. So once it's thought out though, you need to standardize that folder structure and use it as the backbone across all of your projects. And why do we do this? It's because it makes for easy navigation when somebody jumps into your project or even when you jump into a project. And it's especially important when you're working in an agency or studio setting so that everybody knows where assets should be located. Here's an example of a folder structure that I use on a daily basis. When needed, you can easily expand or reduce this structure to suit the nuances of an individual project. So you can see that in general, I break things into big, broad categories like audio, documents, exports, footage, graphics, and projects. Within those folders, I break those sections down. So audio is broken down into getting things from mix, into getting music, sound effects, source audio from the shoot, and VO or voiceovers. In the documents folder, I will place any relevant documents that pertain to that project, whether that's conform files like an XML or an AAF. We'll talk more about those later in the course. Um, or even scripts or transcripts. In the exports folder, that's where you guessed it, exports go. Footage, I will put, again, you guessed it, footage. Graphics will hold any graphics that I create or that are provided to me from the client. In the projects folder, that's where I keep my Premiere Pro and After Effects project backups. So with the folder structure situated, let's take a look at how we get the footage from the source drive to our media drive. And I'm sure you're gonna say, copy and paste. And I say, nope. So to be clear, copy and paste would probably work. The risk that you run is that the standard copy and paste process on Windows and Mac does not provide any way of verifying that all the ones and zeros that makes up your media transferred successfully to the new drive. That's where we bring in offload software. And there's a couple of versions of this, paid and free. On the paid side of things, we have Hedge, Shotput Pro, Silverstack, and to a lesser extent, offload. These four offloaders are just some of the well-known options that are out there, but many more do exist that have more nuanced features. So in general, an offloader is built to not only move media, but it also provides a checksum at the end of that that is a report that verifies all of the media was transferred successfully, or if it wasn't transferred successfully, what went wrong. So they help you diagnose any issues that happen with a transfer. For the average user looking for an easy to use offloader, I cannot recommend Hedge enough. It's simple, relatively cheap, and very, very, very fast. Shotput Pro and Silverstack are more expensive, and they're both geared toward more advanced users looking for a little bit more control or detailed transfer reports. You'll see Shotput Pro and Silverstack used on high-end productions like movies and TV shows and things like that. As for offload, it's nice to look at, pretty interface, but it's extremely slow, so avoid it at all costs. Moving on. On the free side of things, we have TerraCopy. Now, it by itself is not a true offload piece of software, but it does offer many similar features like checksums and the ability to restart failed transfers from where it left off. It's both Windows and Mac friendly and it blows the pants off of copying and pasting using Explorer or Finder. So I use it as my default copy and paste handler on Windows. 
So even if you're not looking for an offloader, I would suggest going and downloading this right now, throwing the developers a few bucks anyways as a thank you, um, they sincerely deserve it, and using this as your default copy-paste handler too. It's awesome. So now that we've got the media from our source drive onto our media drive, what next? Well, now we need to talk about transcoding. Transcoding is what happens after the media has been pulled onto our media drive. And it's the process for changing the media's codec from one to another. For example, it would be like converting an H.264 video to a ProRes video. Now, why would you want to do this? The main reason for transcoding is to change media from an interframe codec to an intraframe codec. Now, those are very similar sounding words with drastic differences. Interframe codecs like H.264s are compressed media. They save space and visually look good, but it comes at the cost of using more of your computer's processing power. It's harder to play an interframe codec back. That's why when you stack them on top of each other or you try to play them in reverse or skip around inside of an H.264, it's very, very choppy. Now, intraframe codecs like ProRes are less compressed, look great, and they don't tax your computer as much. Sounds great. What's the trade-off? Well, the downside is that they consume more storage space. And just as an aside, audio should be transcoded too. If you regularly edit with MP3 or M4A audio and you sometimes experience dropouts when you're playing things back or just weird stuff in general happens when you're exporting, it's because you're editing with compressed audio. So do a super quick convert to a WAV file or an AIF and you can rock on. Now, it sounds like transcoding is a good thing. So why wouldn't you want to transcode? Well, it's twofold. Transcoding takes time and it needs more storage space. And really, modern NLEs work well with compressed media, for the most part. So that said, issues, especially in Adobe Premiere, will arise when stacking multiple compressed video layers on top of each other and or stacking numerous effects onto those video layers. So in the end, you must weigh the pros and cons of transcoding with each project that you're working on. If it's a simple edit that you can bang out quickly, it may not be worth the time to transcode, but if it's going to be a more in-depth process or a very complicated edit with lots of video layers, you probably want to spend the time up front to transcode to a better codec. If you're unsure of what that codec is, you can check it inside of Premiere. Pull the clip into Premiere, right-click, and check its properties. From there, you can see the codec the clip is using, and you can decide whether or not you need the transcode. Now, what are the steps to transcoding? I'm not going to spend a lot of time discussing the actual transcode process because we're going to do it together. Now, this slide is a great reference that you can check out in the part two PDF if you need it later. I want to leave you with just this, uh, this food for thought about proxies. I'm sure you've heard of them. If your source footage was shot in a raw codec like B-RAW or RED, R3D, transcoding will destroy all of the raw properties of that footage. Now, there's some reasons to transcode these raw formats to other codecs, but in general, you shouldn't do it. If the concern is processing power for the raw footage, you just don't think your computer can handle it, you should instead consider using a proxy workflow, which we'll discuss in a later part. Okay, it's time to go. Let's ingest some footage. So here we are. We have received a drive from production, and it has a folder in it called Scramble King. This is going to be the project that we use throughout this course, and right now we're going to ingest it onto our media raid. So in this window, you can see that I have my external hard drive with the project on it as it is. It's got all of these folders in there that the DIT has included. And inside of those folders, we have a bunch of clips. Um, we may even have, you know, multiple folders within folders. So there's a lot of stuff going on here that we need to unpack. The first thing that we want to do, though, we need to set a destination for these clips on our local media storage. So on my RAID, which I call Media RAID, I need to create a project. Now, like we discussed earlier, I have a folder template that I like to use. So what I'm going to do is jump back to this main folder and I'm going to duplicate it. Do this, I'll rename it and call it scramble, whoop, can't type, king. There we go. And inside that folder, I'm going to dig into footage and I'm going to make a new folder and we're going to give that today's date. So we're going to call it 20. 1118 underscore ingested. We put ingested at the end to know that we have ingested all of this footage from an external source. It's just one way of kind of keeping track of how things are going. Now what we need to do is really dig in and understand what this footage is that we're working with. Um, is it, you know, intraframe codec? Is it inner frame codec? By understanding what kind of footage we're working with, we can determine how to treat it when we're doing the ingest. So let's dig into cinematic shots. 
Um, now, the first thing that you'll see is that our file extension is .mov. Now, the scary thing about .mov is that it can hide what the actual codec is. If it said .mp4, we would know right off the bat that it was an mp4 codec or an h.264 codec that we were going to have to transcode if we were going to do any serious editing with it. Now, since it's .mov, this could even be ProRes or DNxHD. We don't know. So the way to look at it is we can use VLC or even Premiere or even QuickTime if you're on a Mac to see what these codecs are. So using VLC, I can just double click. It'll open up in VLC. Let's pause it. And I can hit Control I. Um, if you're on a Mac, you can hit Command I. Jump over to the Codec tab, and if we scroll through here, we can see that it says Codec H.264. That's exactly what we want to know. So we know that this is an H.264 codec. There's a good chance that the rest of this footage is as well. But the only way to know is to kind of cherry pick some of these files and check. So let's uh, jump through here, and let's look at this one. Now another way to check is we can jump into Premiere Pro. So we'll go in here. I'll drag in this clip, and let's look at it. You can hit Control P or Command P if you're on a Mac using the better editor keyboard. And we can see that the video codec is an MP4 H.264. It tells us everything that we need to know. So again, it's an interframe codec, and we might want to think about transcoding it. But because we're just learning here, let's say we don't want to transcode this footage. We're going to edit it as it is, and we just want to ingest it directly to our media drive. And the best way to do that, like we discussed, is using an offloader software. So I'm going to open up Hedge. I'll come over to this external drive and drag Scramble King, the whole folder, into Sources. And now I'm going to jump into the Media Raid, go to my ingested folder. I'm going to pull this out real quick. Don't need that at the moment. And I'm going to drag this in. Okay, now in Hedge, we can see that we're going from the Scramble King folder over here, from our external hard drive, to our destination folder, the media raid, and I can hit add one transfer. All right, we're going to wait a minute, and it's going to move all of this footage over to our media raid while giving us reports at the end of it to make sure that everything transferred properly. So let's go ahead and speed this up and get through this process. Now, as this goes, let's just talk about one thing to keep in mind. If you start transferring a project that is terabytes worth of footage, it is going to take a long time. So there's no problem in starting this and maybe letting it run overnight. That way, when it gets done, you can come back into the office in the morning and check and see what the progress says. You'll see a green bar on Hedge that says, hey, things are good to go. Or you'll see something that says there were errors, and then you can go back and figure out what those errors were so that you can correct them. But the most important thing is you didn't waste time during your day when you could be working waiting on a file transfer. And we're done. And look at that. We have a green bar. It says it's completed. There's no errors. And we can just hit this little magnifying glass icon, and it's going to pull up our window. So let's close this guy. All right. So inside of our ingested folder on our media storage, we'll see that we have a Scramble King folder like we copied from our external drive. And we have a transfer log folder. This is the magic of using an offloader. This log tells you everything, every single file that was moved and gives a code saying that everything was copied over correctly. This is what you use to troubleshoot if you have issues during a transfer. This is what you don't get when you do a simple copy and paste. Now, that might not seem like a big deal, but when you're talking about terabytes of footage and you're talking about high-end projects, that is extremely important. Okay, now I'm going to do the unthinkable, and we're going to delete that because I'm going to show you another way of doing things. So let's say we decided that we went through all of this Scramble King footage. All right, we've looked at all of this. We've determined that it's an H.264 codec, and we know we're going to do some serious editing with this, and we really don't want to get bogged down. So we want to go ahead and transcode on the front end and make sure that we can have a smooth editing process when we're inside of Premiere. So the best way to do that is after creating our ingested folder on our media drive, we can open this, and I want to duplicate this exact folder structure from the source drive into the media drive. Now, why do I want to do that? I do that because in case we have any issues, let's say we copy over the entire cinematic shots folder or we transcode the entire final gym shots folder. And when we're editing, we realize there's a problem with the file. We want to navigate to our backup drives that we received from production in order to figure out where that file messed up when we were transcoding or where we were copying. We can come in here, find the messed up file, and then try to fix it from that solution. Having that duplicated folder structure is one way of helping us do that much easier. So how do we duplicate the folder structure? Well, you could simply come in here and make a new folder. 
maybe I could type better. And you could do this and you could copy the entire folder structure, the entire folder tree by hand. Now, obviously that is gonna be some tedious process, especially if you're talking a very complex folder structure. So I've developed a very simple app called the Duplicate Directory app. Now, all this does is duplicates a folder's directory and copies none of the files. And this works on both Mac and Windows. You can download it on the Better Editor website for free. Okay, so to use it, we're gonna select source path. Go here, salt, scramble king, great. And select the destination path. I'm going to go to projects, better editor, footage, and ingested. Great. Select folder and say duplicate. Okay, when it's all done, we can close the program and look at this in our ingested folder. We have a ton of folders. And if we go in there, look, there's more folders. Look, oh my gosh. It's all there and none of the files are there. So that tedious process out the window. Super simple, but it makes me happy. Okay, now we need to talk transcoding. So let's open up Media Encoder and I'm gonna transcode these files directly from the production hard drive. The, you could either do that or you could move it to a local hard drive and then transcode. It's really whatever works best with your workflow. If you're working off of SD cards, this is very important. If you're working off SD cards, CFast cards, things like that, you want to move them locally, put them on a hard drive first before you start transcoding. Otherwise the bandwidth and the throughput is just gonna be way too low and it's gonna take forever to transcode. Okay, all that said, let's grab all of these cinematic shots and I'm going to drag them into Media Encoder. And this is where you have to be really careful. We've gotta be very organized when we're doing this. We want to make sure that we're taking the cinematic shots from the source drive and putting them in the proper folder on the media drive. Now that everything has been pulled into Media Encoder, I'm gonna select all of these and you'll see that my Media Encoder defaulted these to Apple ProRes 422. That's great. If it didn't do that, you can come to this first dropdown and pick the type of codec that you wanna use. So I wanna use a QuickTime codec since I'm transcoding these into an intraframe codec. I want one that's going to be good that I trust. QuickTime is a good way to start. From there, I can click on the second dropdown under preset and use any of the stock presets that Adobe has in here. These are awesome. Or you can even make your own. Um, I'm going to just default to the Apple ProRes 422. And what this is going to do, if we open this up, is if you look at the settings, it's going to use the source settings and simply convert the video codec to Apple ProRes 422. It's also going to change the audio codec to a linear PCM instead of a compressed AAC format, which it may or may not be. All right, we'll say cancel. And now I wanna set my destination. This again is where you need to be very important. So we're gonna grab all of these clips, point them to our new folder, scramble king, footage, ingested, and cinematic shots, done. Okay, that group of clips is ready to go. At that point, we can hit play and let it start cooking. So I'm gonna do that, and as I do that, I'm gonna start adding more clips into this. So we'll open up our final gym shots. We'll grab this, I'll drag it in here, drop to add separate sources. Then we can scroll down and see where our file path changed. And we can see that all of these are also set up as QuickTime ProRes 422, which is good. So we don't have to worry about that. I'll select all of these point them to their new destination. And this is gonna go to final gym shots. And there we go, we're off to the races again. And you'll continue that process for all of the folders that you're transcoding. If you're getting this from onset, there's a good chance that some of the codecs might be inner frame and some of the codecs might be intra frame. That's why it's important to go through and check all of the codecs beforehand so that you don't transcode something that you don't need to transcode. So I'm gonna quickly get through the rest of this and then we'll review when this is all done. Here we are, through the magic of editing, we are already done transcoding everything. Pretty cool. Sometimes I wish it would happen that fast in the real world, which is why, again, you might want to set transcodes up to happen overnight. That way, if you're transcoding terabytes of stuff, and maybe even you're using multiple computers, keep it organized, let it happen overnight. That way, when you come in in the morning, you can double check everything, make sure it looks good, and be on your way to editing. All right, the footage is on the media drive, and it is ready to go. In part three, we're gonna talk project organization and get it sorted out inside of Premiere Pro.